AMC and GME are back in the green today, really continuing this uptrend. And this is a positive thing. Now, if we kind of look ahead to what we're going to get tomorrow, it's going to be the inflation data. And a lot is going to change based off of that coming tomorrow. There's very high expectations that inflation is going to plummet. If that does not happen, well, markets are priced for perfection right now. So we need to kind of talk about that. What's going to likely happen and how it could affect AMC and GME. There's a positive outcome to this and there's a negative outcome to this. But what we can see from AMC here today is cost to borrow fees are actually soaring again. The cost to borrow fees from interactive brokers from yes, from yeah, yesterday, from Friday, have more than doubled. And that is screaming at us. It's telling us something. So let's get into all of that. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. So number one, AMC, GME are in the green today. Now, AMC, not so much compared to GME. AMC at one point was hitting the highs at $4.88 per share. Looked like you were going to approach or even maybe break the $5 level by the end of the day today. That did not happen, at least so far. GME is up 4.14%. This is widely because on their earnings, they fired their CEO and they appointed Ryan Cohen as the executive chairman. Basically, thinking that he's going to shake things up in the business and that would be a move for the better, in which that probably is. And after further digestion of this transition, this firing of the CEO and upgrading Ryan Cohen, the stock has been reacting pretty well off of the lows that we've seen after earnings. And that's basically off of the digestion. So I think you're really waiting for more details on what the plan is going ahead from Ryan Cohen. And the market's kind of starting to kind of price that into uh, the stock. That's why you've been green the last two trading days now. So that's kind of what is going on with GME. AMC, we know, I mean, if I, I really don't have to say this, but I'm going to, the court date is the next big catalyst. That is the thing that's going to really move the stock dramatically. And based off of what happens there, it could be a big reaction to the upside. It could cause the short squeeze. It could cause the MOS. Or it could be a big downside reaction. It's really uncertain based off of what's going to happen with the courts. Now, one thing that I will tell you is that if we go to the Ortex data, AMC is seeing a lot of positive things happening with their or text data. Number one, I would say in the short term is cost of borrow fees that are absolutely soaring. Interactive brokers cost of borrow fees have doubled since the last trading day. They're now at almost 115%. On Friday, cost of borrow fees were around 64% from interactive brokers. So they and and now there even is more shares available. On Friday, there was very few shares in the low thousands. Now you're seeing 20, 30, 60, 70,000 shares that are available to be lent out with cost of borrow fees that are almost doubled. Now, if we take a look at the cost of borrow average, that is sitting at 272%. Cost of borrow max, 306%. Cost of borrow minimum at, at 90.21%. So there is a lot of... A lot more volatility, I guess, expected in AMC based off of what we're seeing with the cost of borrow fees. Cost of borrow fees typically spike when there is more volatility. Now, if we take a look at the live short interest of free float, that is sitting at 23.1%, 119.27 million shares that are currently sold short. And if we look at the overview here, you got... $567.75 million worth of short positions in AMC. Free flow out on loan at 36.18%. 186.83 million shares currently out on loan. 
with the days to cover increasing to almost eight here today, sitting at 7.92. This is the most bullish thing because days to cover going higher basically tells you you have low volume, that the short position um, overall in AMC or, or any name really is staying high or even going higher at the same time the volume is dropping so if shorts were to cover for an example and the volume went higher days to cover would fall or if shorts were to cover and the volume stayed the same days to cover it would fall because it's based on the total aggregate amount of shares that are sold short relative to the volume so essentially what this means is that when you do get volume that goes into amc it is going to explode the stock higher. The higher the days to cover, the larger the move is going to be. Co uh, Says cost to borrow right here, trailing three months at about 74%. And you're also still at 100% share utilization. So you are getting uh, very good Ortex data. I mean, as far as a short squeeze is concerned, things look pretty good. The short score is still at 93, which is the highest level, meaning the most short squeezable level that you have been at in a very long time now if we take a look at the option activity um as far as the volume today you're seeing 73.77 percent of amc's volume on calls for this week 26 and a quarter percent for puts so you are getting more calls that are being placed on amc here today by the the total you know option chain on amc from retail from hedge funds from institutions now those options from retail don't tend to move the stock nearly to the same degree as institutional investors now it's still early in the day today so we'll see what happens and we're not getting any specific orders coming through so far from hedge funds or institutions but you want to really watch those ten dollar puts those deep in the money puts you started to see more of that activity on Friday and on Thursday of last week, seeing millions of dollars in these single trades. Like, look at this one on June 8th. This was a July 21st $10 put worth $5.09 million. This is this uh, was 8,250 options that were placed on AMC. And if you, I mean, do a little simple math here, you could times the quantity amount by 100 and roughly, you're seeing 825,000 shares that had to be short by market makers just based off of that one trade alone, just to hedge out that trade. So it does have a very big impact on AMC, and I think that's why we've been suppressed, and it's all because of the court date that's going to be the end of this month and the volatility that could come with that. Now, on a broader market note, the one-year inflation expectations went down 0.3 percentage points to 4.1%. That's the lowest annual outlook since May of 2021, just as inflation was beginning to spike to its highest level in more than 41 years. Household spending is expected to increase 5.6% over the next year, up 0.4 percentage points from April. So, Markets are very optimistic right now, very, very optimistic that inflation is going to fall off of a cliff coming in the near term. And that's how the markets are trying to justify these rate cuts that are priced into the markets. Now, the biggest problem that we're going to have as an investor is the the expectation that inflation is going to fall off a cliff. Yesterday or tomorrow's inflation report. I mean, you're not expecting just a small deceleration. You're, you're expecting a massive deceleration across the board, especially in your headline inflation rate year over year, expecting that to come in at 4.1% from 4.9%. That's a huge expected drop, whereas you're really getting a divergence because the core inflation rate is only expected to come in at 5.3% down from 5.5% at the last month's reading. So you're expecting headline to fall off of a cliff. At the same time, you're expecting core headline or core inflation as well as uh, the core uh, inflation rate month over month and uh, year over year numbers to slightly tick down. So that headline number you're expecting 
a huge fall. If that does not happen, it could be some real downside for the markets, considering the S&P 500 is at the highest level you have seen in well over a year. And the NASDAQ is even higher than the S&P 500. So you're pricing in a real Goldilocks kind of outcome for the markets right now. I'm not all too convinced that's actually what we're going to get tomorrow. So that's going to do it here in this video. There's really nothing else happening today. You're getting some bond auctions here relatively soon. If we go ahead and pull that up um, and see... You have a six-month bond auction at 11.30. You have a three-year bond auction at 11.30. You have a 10-year bond auction at 1 p.m. And then a three-month bond auction at 1 p.m. as well. These, The three-month and the 10-year probably going to be the most important ones because they, they are kind of near term, right? The next three months. And a lot of people have asked, like, what does the Treasury rebalancing have to do with anything like the treasury has to fill their TGA. They're going to sell about one and a half trillion worth of bonds. What does that do uh, for bonds or for the bond market and for stocks? Well, it pulls out capital from different areas, right? Everywhere, essentially. It's like draining money out of stocks, one and a half trillion dollars. So that's right there a negative. But when you get a big uh, bond auction, it goes off of supply and demand to dictate the yield. So if you get a lot more supply and it's not met with the same demand, then yields are going to increase. If that supply is met with equal or greater demand, well, yields are going to fall. And that's the implication here for stocks as well. Not just money being pulled out of stocks to, to fund these you know purchases of, of these bond auctions, but also if demand is not good or too excessive, you're going to have big swings in the interest rates on these bonds, guys. So that is going to do it here in this video. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. You guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.